Hi there, this is Polly. Do you wonder why I'm not starting from scratch? Actually, the doll I'm gonna show you today was this guy from the durability test. But I didn't like how his eyes looked bloodshot, so I removed the makeup. And then I did another makeup facing forward which turned out to be slightly closed-eyed. I tried to fix his right eye just a real bit but I failed and had to restart from this much. While I I'm gonna tweak the makeup. I wanna make own tag. For that, I need to tattoo his face. First, write the letters, the shadow like me, and then trace them out using a black color pencil. It's not finished yet. We should erase them only leaving guidelines for blush painting. Before moving on, let me briefly remove his eyebrows. Now using black color and a detail brush, light the letters really carefully. They are so tiny and it was quite challenging to draw them. The most tricky part was putting in all the letters on his right cheek. The like me part was likely to go over his nose, so I had to fix it several times. Anyway, it looks okay. Let's draw his eyebrows again. Add some white onto the white of his eyes and the highlighted area. I use olive green for his eyes. It seems like the color lenses he's wearing in the on film are not exactly this color though. Alright, let's tan his skin. I'll make natural skin tone first by grinding different pastels and blending their powders. The colors I use are burnt sienna number 4, white oxide red number 3, and titanium white. The sandy color is likely to give him awfully yellow undertones, so I'm gonna add a touch of Indian lead or something. To be honest, I'm not sure what the name is of this. Some of the pastels here are what I've used since I was a teen over a decade ago. Anyway, gently blend the pastel powder all over his skin. These days, I prefer using this brown color for lips to using pink or coral. It's burnt sienna number one and especially well suited for natural warm undertones. Check them out! Don't his lips and skin look natural? We gotta preserve their colors by spraying clear sealant. Now I'm gonna add a hoop in his left ear. Cut a section from the hoop and open it. Pierce his earlobe using a gimlet and hang the ling. Actually, I should have done this before tanning his skin, because the sealant might slightly crack while squeezing his head. Alright, let me finish the makeup. I'm adding the facial molds but it's all out of focus, sorry for that. Considering it will be partially covered with the bangs, I made a heavily made of face so it can stand out through them. I think it's done. By the way, his head is smaller compared to the original doll. I put his head in a glass of acetone to easily remove the stuck makeup, leaving it for about 3 minutes. This was 6 months ago and I found the head had shrunken, notably around his scalp area. Seems like it's about 3mm uh, shorter and has slightly smaller facial area. Fortunately, the diameter of his neck remained almost the same, allowing the neck connector to go through it. Seeing the entire bodies, you can see the difference better. As I already mentioned, it was at the end of last year that I did the very first make of Taeyong and then made a wavy black hair. I braided the yarn hair and even used a heated needle to make tight curls, which didn't go very well. The curls ended up getting loose. I felt the need to try something new. To return to today's own Tae, I decided to go about planting hair or pump looting. This way, I'll be able to go with wavy hair strings from the beginning. 
So I gave it a shot with another doll beforehand. Looks okay, but these blind spots get on my nerve. So I painted V-doll scalp in the same color as the hair strings before starting to relute. I'm briefly showing you for starters. You will need hair strings. These are synthetic mohair, but you can use charon hair or high temp hair as well. You can get looting needles from doll supply shops online. Now let's learn step by step. A looting needle has two points like a cloven hoof. Grab a tiny bit of hair, fold in half, and hang it between needle points. Point to the pore and stick the needle until the hair gets into there. Pump the needle about 10 times so the roots of hair strands can get tangled inside. Don't brush or pull out hair before you plant enough of it in lows. The needle points have very sharp blades, so be careful, otherwise you might run them into your finger like me. Wearing a thimble is a good idea. I cut it to fit my thumb, but I pricked my pinky this time. Wear as many thimbles as you can. When looting the hairline, grab hair as little as you can, about 5 strands. The secret of natural looking looting is to plant only a tiny bit of hair in one pore while filling as many pores as you can. They say looting needles break easily, but mine didn't. Probably that's because I chose a thick one. It took about 10 hours to fill all the pores. Now we only have the middle part left. While we've been using this much of hair so far, from now on, we needed thick hair enough to cover the scalp. And I just realized that I wouldn't have cut my fingers if I had pumped the needle slowly like this. Sticking thick strands of hair is not easy either into the needle or into the pore. So this will be the last pumping action. I was pumping more than 30 times. Well, anyway, reluting is finished. I cut and sprayed the silicone thimble I was wearing and covered his face to protect the makeup. Now I'm gonna boil wash his hair so the roots can be fixed. Let it dry overnight. Honestly speaking, I did this hair part before painting the face. I put them in reverse order. That's why I'm lipping his hair again with a towel. Anyway, let's assume that you are done with reluting and makeup. And let's finish the head part by trimming hair. And voila, it's done! Let's move on to the neck tattoo. Sketch the twigs with a grey pencil. Spray clear sealant and define the lines using a black pencil. In reality, it wasn't a tattoo but henna, but anyway, my Tang doll will have a clear and half permanent tattoo. and tan the skin around his neck and chest using pastels so the color can match his face. 
Spray once again and make the line smoother by painting with a brush. I don't have the footage, but I tan the skin once again and finish it by spraying. Let's make his outfit! Actually, I started making the Rico and pants as soon as I watched them in the Kinetic Manifesto film. I like the black cargo trousers better than the white ones, and luckily Tim wore them as well on some other stages. These pants I made have lots of details but they didn't fit the doll good enough, and the fake zip fasteners around ankles were weird. So then, see what I have here. I found out I could simply get Jake's outfit from a Korean crafter. It took about a month to get, but this one is excellent value and has great quality. It almost feels like she's donating her talent for armies. I requested her to change the size for an of its body, so I thought the sleeves might be small long to this Mate body, but looks pretty nice. Hmm, I don't want my video to end this way. Why don't I make black wings for him? As many of you might have already noticed from the thumbnail, his appearance will be a combination of on and mod 7 concept photos. But anyway, this whole thing is a kind of fan art which I do to suit myself. Here's the materials you need. A coil of flexible wire to build a frame structure. Black feathers, of course. Super glue. Nippers. Tweezers and scissors. Rubber bands and a soldering iron and solder lead. There are various types of wings. I wanted to make the half furred ones. I'm not good at this kind of craft, so I involved Lucky again in my fan art activity and is gonna make them. Ta-da! Here's a frame structure made with wire and a soldering iron. It seems cool already. He painted the frame in black using nail polish. He attached the feathers onto the frame using super glue. It took quite some time until the glue dried. Each time he picked the feather in proper lengths and added them one by one. Oh my goodness, look at his hands! The ink from the feathers have smeared his hands black. Even though I washed them six times. Oh, they look nice. I finished the wings by tying rubber bands for shoulder straps. Yay, finally everything is finished. Let's give all of them to my Vidal. 